The five keys to slow so what down are the five biological keys aging? To slowing down biological aging. Right, in my book, uh, The Science of Aging Well, I talk about five key things. Now, before I discuss these five things with you, um, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Uh, number one, these five keys are disproportionate, meaning um, they're not that critical when you're younger, when you're under 35, when you're under 40. But as you get increasingly older, they become exponentially more important, right? So that's what I mean when I say they're disproportionate. You don't really see the effects when you're young, but you will see a tremendous benefit if you apply them in your older years. Uh, the second thing is that uh, these five keys are symbiotic, meaning they work well together. You, you can't just use three keys and say, okay, uh, this is good enough. No, you have to do all five things correctly all the time. Otherwise, you're not going to get uh, the benefits. Okay, so what are the five keys? In the book, I talk about uh, five key things that can slow down aging if you do them correctly number one is your nutrition number two is your movement number three is your sleep number four is correct environmental exposure and number five is the quality of your relationships so I'm gonna go through them one by one uh, number one I'd like to talk about nutrition um, so I don't like to use the word diet because to use the word diet means to imply that uh, you have to eat less and that's not at all what we teach. As a matter of fact, what I teach my clients to do is to eat more. If you're eating more of the correct foods, uh, your body is going to tell you exactly how much of it you need. And the reason why I encourage people to eat more, is, especially as they get older, is because if you're doing it correctly, it's actually very, very hard to overeat. That's number one, right? Uh, and number two, one of the hallmarks of aging is it's something called nutrient malabsorption. As you get older, you lose the ability to absorb nutrients the way that you did when you were young. So for example, if you were 19 years old and I gave you 40 grams of protein, your body would probably be able to synthesize almost 100% of the protein that I give you. But if you're 65, 70 and I gave you 40 grams of protein, you'd probably be only able to synthesize 20, 25, 30 grams, right? So uh, a lot of people, they tend to eat less as they get older. And the problem with that is if you're eating less and you're absorbing even less, then that makes you prone to sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss. And that makes you prone to osteopenia and osteoporosis. And that increases, actually, that effectively accelerates aging for you, right? So number one is nutrition. That's key. Eat as much as you can while maintaining a healthy body composition and a healthy physiologic state, right? Number two um, is your movement. So I always tell our clients exercise is not mandatory in this program, but movement is. And the reason why movement is very, very critical, it's because we were designed to move. The human animal is a heterotroph. What does that mean? That means we can't make our own food. And in order for us to eat, we have to move. In order for us to get calories, we have to spend calories. And so nature gave us bones and muscle for locomotion. And you will find that essentially the more you move, the thinner and healthier you become, the less you move, the fatter and the sicker you become, right? We were designed to move. And there are very, very two, there are two very, very important metrics that I track when we talk about movements for our 360 anti-aging program, number one is our VO2 max, or your ability to utilize oxygen, right? Your respiratory rate. And number two is physical strength. Why are these two very, very important? Because the studies are very, very clear that a person with a high VO2 max and high physical strength tends to live much, much longer and much, much healthier than a person who is opposite, right? So those are very, very big metrics. A high VO2 max and high physical strength confers an almost 400% greater protection against something called all-cause mortality or ACM, right? Which is dying from any cause. So I, I always track these metrics and 
I will tell the client to do whatever it takes to raise their VO2 max and to raise their physical strength. Number three, sleep. So um, this is obviously very, very important, but most people don't really understand why. It's because sleep is the time when the body actually repairs itself. When, whenever we're awake, in our waking hours, the body is actually catabolic. You're breaking down tissue, you're breaking down protein, you're breaking down bone. And it is during sleep that the body builds itself back up again, right? So the quality of your sleep in, in, in a very, very large way determines your body's ability to repair itself, to make itself brand new again. So sleep is a very, very powerful anti-aging intervention in that it prevents premature aging, right? If you're always catabolic, you're always breaking down because you're not sleeping enough. So that's the third quality. And the, the fourth key is correct environmental exposure. So what does this mean? Um, we have basically evolved as human beings f for the past 200,000 years as Homo sapiens around the Earth's natural environments. We used to spend 90% of our lives outdoors. And now, the modern 21st century lifestyle has flipped that completely 180 degrees. Now we spend more than 95% of our time indoors, away from the natural stressors of our environment. So people think that stress is bad. Oh, all stress is bad. I should eliminate stress from my life. That's, not, that's actually not true. The correct types of stress is actually uh, very, very good. They're called hormetic stressors. Hormetic stressors are things that will temporarily cause stress to your body, but ultimately will make your body stronger because your body has to adapt to the stress, right? And these stressors are provided by our external environment. And if we uh, fail to expose ourselves correctly, to being grounded to the earth, to being exposed to natural sunlight, to being exposed to, to, to having to hunt for our food, having to, to move, to forage, we are effectively making our bodies weaker. So chronic stress is bad, but actually environmental hormetic stress, as long as it's not too much, is actually good for you, right? It will effectively slow down aging. So the fifth key is the quality of your relationships. So probably more important than the first four combined is your reason for a living and the quality of your relationships. So the science is very, very clear here. For individuals who are very, very long-lived, they have very, very strong and stable emotional connections with other people. So if you look at uh, areas of the world where they have large populations of centenarians or people who live to over 100, you're talking about um, Ikaria, you're talking about Loma Linda, you're talking about uh, uh, Nagoya in Japan. Uh, these places, they have very, very different diets, they have very, very different lifestyles and cultures, but the one thing that they all have in common is that they have very, very strong community relationships. The old people interact with the young, the old people are still useful to society, right? They're still contributing, they're still part of the group. And scientists believe that this is one of the reasons why these people actually live long and healthy. And if you have good quality relationships, that has actually been shown to slow down your rate of aging.